Hi, this is Amir again, and this is the second part of the Access 2007 and 2010 video. I've already shown you how to create tables and how to design it. The basic elements, as I said, Access is really powerful, and there is a whole bunch of features to it. I'm just trying to introduce to you so that you are comfortable with Access, and if you had to take a test at any employment agencies or some kind of a computer test, you will be comfortable with it. So in the first video, we looked at um, creating the design view. That is where you design your table. And in the data sheet view, this is where you enter your records. So I've just gone ahead and entered a few. And I had shown you how you can have your drop-down list. How can you have drop-down as a country. We also looked at the lookup wizard for telephone numbers, where you, they did automatically put the brackets for you. And if you wanted, you could always go back and create a drop-down list for relations. You know, what do you want? I think, you know what, I made a spelling mistake on relation. Let me just go back and fix it. Uh, didn't notice that. So I just went to the design view. And I can change that and make sure there is nothing there in the caption. Okay, let's come back. Right, it's fixed. So I can create a drop-down menu here too if I wanted. So now just to some basic ideas around when you have your table and your list, if you had a whole bunch, how do you go around working with it? The first thing you can do is if I wanted, I could come here in the main section and I can do ascending, sorting A to Z in an alphabetical order. So if I come here and I click A to Z, now it puts everything in the alphabetical order and now you see all the numbers have moved too because all the information moved. I could click into relation and I can say ascending. So now all the families are together, friends are together. Now when I click on birth date and I click ascending, now you see it starts from the year 60, 66. Now in the 66 year it puts January 1st and then August. The reason is because we set the data type to date and time. If I had set this to number or text, this would not have done that. It would have put it in a different order. I can go back to contact ID, ascending. Oh, I've got it. Now just a note on the postal code, like up here, this is the format we have in Canada. Now if I wanted to type the US postal code, it will not allow me to type it because of expecting a Canadian postal code. So you might have to create a separate field for it. Okay. So that's the ascending and then you can also use the descending. There is also another way that by which you can filter things. So like, say if I'm clicked in this Toronto field, I go to filter and I can just remove and just keep Toronto. Now I only got Toronto and I can click the toggle filter again and it removes it. So you can filter things by certain things whatever you want it. I think you can even do it from here from this button itself you can do it if you wanted to. The other thing you can do is you can even find and replace things. So there is the find button and also the replace button. So say if I wanted to change, uh, I'll make something up. Say I wanted to change the Paul here to something else. So I can click on replace. Now I say find what? I can say find Paul. Replace with, um, say, James. Okay. Now, all I need to make sure that up here where it says look in, I say the whole document. Otherwise, it will only look for in the field where I had clicked. So if I'm in the city, it will only look for Paul in the city and it's not going to find it. So I can hit find. And I'm just going to move this. And you see it finds it and I can say replace. Now it replaces Paul with James, which is the same idea from Word and Excel where you can use the same things. So that is replace, find and replace. You can also filter things by selection from here. You see it says equal to James or not equal to James, which will say everything but James. The same thing I can do here with Atlanta. You can say filter by selection equals Atlanta. Now it only shows me Atlanta. 
click on the toggle filter so that it brings all your filter back all your results back now there are also ways by which you can take this information from here and put it in Word or Excel and to do that um, I'm just going to bear with me because I don't try to remember stuff. I always just go about figuring things out. So there it is. So right there, export selected objects to Word. There is also the option to export it to Excel. So what it does, it opens up Excel and takes this information in the table and puts it in an Excel spreadsheet. So if you needed to do that, you could do that. So remember there are different tabs here. I can just come back to the table tab. If I wanted to delete a record, I can just click on it and there is an option to delete. Now remember, once you delete it, there is no way to bring back the deleted records again. And because my contact ID here is my primary key, the number 5 will never be used again so that five there will be a gap five will always be missing so because in this case we set the contact ID to auto number just go back and remind you or the contact ID data type is auto number I don't have control over the numbering system so if you want that control then you might want to choose the data type number or sometimes you can have data type as text because you want to put the combination of words and numbers so remember, data type text means you can type words and numbers in the field. And usually with the primary key and all that, be sure about it before you start entering information. Otherwise, later on, it can be a little bit tricky to go about changing things. So it's a good thing to make sure that you are okay with it before you start entering your information. So this is table. Now I'm going to talk about form. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about query and report so it this is nice here that I can enter information here in the form in the table and and change things however it's better to enter the information in the form and I'll show you why and how to create one so if I want I can just hit X here to close this and there is my table right there I can double click it if I wanted to open it now I want to create a form for this contact list table so I go to create and I like the form wizard it's it's much better to go about doing it I click the form wizard and there, there it says table contact list if you had more than one table you could pick the one you wanted now I can add all the fields by using the double arrow it adds all of them now up here if I felt like you know what I don't have to type the contact ID so I can remove it you know and if you didn't want to worry about certain fields you could just remove that click next let this be the default options you can learn about them later for now the default options good now that is the name of the form you know I can just call it contact list form if I want and then I can click finish and so you see right there this is what a form looks like and I can I've got my drop down arrow there is my notes section showing up nicely if I want to create a new entry I can just click on this button here for new and I can just start typing so you know whatever name I have in mind and so on and so forth and whatever I enter here will automatically show up on the table so let's just look at it to verify I just want to close the form I prefer not to have the tables and the forms open at the same time so I can just close it there's my table here's my form I can double click on the contact list table and you see right there the name I just entered showed up here I can just close this double click on the form now as I was mentioning in the first video, everything in Access has the front end and the back end, which is there's a design element to everything. So even the form, 
has a design element. In 2007-2010, they've added this new feature, which is called the Layout View. And there is more stuff to do in Design View, but the Layout is a little bit easier to work with. So if I go to Layout, now this is, I'm in the Layout View. I cannot enter information here. This is just to decide how I want to lay things out. So if I want, I can, you know, reduce the telephone number because, hey, I don't need all that space for the telephone number. You know, if I want, I can reduce the section here like there. And if I want, I can even click here, hold the shift and click here. Now I can drag both of those things. And just, so I've got space that I can use. And if I want it, I could just click here, hold the shift key, and I keep clicking everything. Because I want to select all of these and then I can shift it up. Okay. And you see right now I'm in the list in the form layout and look on the top there it says form layout tools. There are a lot of options that you can add which you can look into later but just base simple ones like format, arrange, design so there are many different designs and themes that you can pick you see if you want it a different color or whatever not a big deal but just nice stuff and there's a lot of other elements you can add like you can add those buttons you know if you had like um, male female so you can have like a button there so there are ways to add buttons and you can have a lot of stuff going on here so I can just click here again and go to form view and this is where I can enter stuff. And you see I moved this telephone number and I can go back and fix it if I wasn't happy with this. And so anything you enter here automatically shows up in your table. I'm just going to close this. Ask me to save. I can say yes. Now if I, again I'm just going to repeat create form wizard choose the table, add the fields, next, 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 and just click finish at the end. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot to creating a form. And then you can just go about entering the information by using this new button. I can even go and scroll across here. And I can change anything I want here. Any changes I make here will show up on the table automatically. So I don't have to worry about hitting save or anything like that. It does it for me. Okay, That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll talk about query and creating reports. Thank you for watching.